All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you all are doing great today. We're going to kind of get, go ahead and get started here in just a moment. But I just want to let everybody get just a chance to get settled in here because we're going to be going through the, uh, you know, our, our sales meeting today. So let me get right just the last minute, get settled down. And well, here we go. So good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. This is an this is our, our monthly sales meeting. And so my name is Alan Richard. I'm the managing broker here at Max One. And we have a lot of really interesting information to share with you guys. And I'm, I'm glad that you guys made it. So thank you. Um, I kind of wanted to, um, well, let me turn the screen down a little bit. You're a little bit better here anyway. No problem one. All right. So one thing that I want to start with is kind of what we have going on with consumer sentiment in our marketplace right now. Because right now, 67% of Americans say that housing is headed for a decline, that the market's going to crash, that things are looking terrible. Uh, and so the, there's going to be a market crash coming up. And they, and they say it's going to happen in the next three years. And so I, I can tell you that, that we're not heading into a, any sort of a crash, and, and especially not in the next year or two anyway kind of thing. Now, how far ahead I can look, that, you know, that's a little bit limited, but we are definitely... But you know what, what we have to understand is, is like, like, we have to understand what's going on with consumer sentiment because folks are going to have a lot of questions for us. And right now, two thirds of the two thirds of your clients think that housing is going to crash. And so we're going to look at some of those numbers here. But if you look at any of the news that's coming out, it's never good about real estate. Is it ever good? No, no, no. It's, it's it is never good. And and they 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 highlight and show. And I'm, I'm going to show you some things today that. It really kind of highlights what what's showing up in the news, and at the same time, what we're looking at real realistically, kind of thing. So, uh, is the recession around the corner? All right now, there's a lot of people who say there is coming up, that kind of thing. Uh, for us, we've already had our recession, and so I'm not worried about a recession at all because for us, a recession really doesn't mean falling home prices. And without falling home prices, you know. For most consumers, when they ask us for our clients, when they say, how's the market? They want to know our property values dropping. That's that's the real metric that, that they measure it by. And so only in 2008 is the only time we, we had real, you know, significant property declines. And honestly, we were the cause of that. You know, we were all Oprah Winfrey of housing at that time. You know, if you had a pulse, we were going to get you in a house. Whether or not you could afford it, that was a completely uh, separate issue out there. But, you know, a recession does mean falling mortgage rates. And for us, you know, if you look at, at the past year, what has made our life so difficult, it was rising interest rates. And so, you know, the average drop during a during recession is two, almost 2.3 points. Uh, and so, you know, we're actually heading in a very, very positive way right now in that. And matter of fact, our mortgage rates are trending down. You know, we, we, we're, we're down about a point, one point, one and a quarter points right now from where we were in October. Uh, and so we are on a very positive trend on mortgage rates. Um, you know, mortgage rates and the federal funds rate, they are related, but they're, but one doesn't necessarily always affect the other. Most of the time it's, it's, it's the markets and how they react, you know, how things are going to happen in the bond market. That's really going to affect, uh, affect mortgage rates a lot. We have a lot of spread, you know, if you look at, at what really drives mortgage rates, it's the 10-year treasury. And we follow 10-year treasury pretty much, you know, item by item. On average, our spread is, is, uh, is around 1.7, but right now we're about two and a half, almost three points spread. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of room left in there from inflation. But when you look at where we're heading on interest rates, um, you know, uh, if, if you kind of look at what's going on, I'm looking at interest rates being in the in the in the fives, in the mid fives, hopefully by the, by summer, at least by the end of summer. Uh, things are really starting to move to a place where we really need them to be for interest rates. And honestly, five and a half is like a magic number for real estate. At five and a half, you know that that's a number where our buyers and our sellers are both going to be very open to to jumping into the transactions because. Right now, we have just as much issue with our sellers jumping in as we do for our buyers jumping in. So, you know, right now in that five and a half percent interest rate, that really is, that's, that's one of those big driving numbers that really does make a lot of things happen for us in real estate. Uh, at that number, 
uh, you know, at seven, we had so much pushback from folks who are like, well, I've got a three and a half percent rate. Why would I go get a seven percent? But five and a half people are, you know, like that's the magic number. We're really heading that way uh, right now in interest rates. So I feel very, very optimistic about what's happening with interest rates, both from, you know, if we go, if there is a, a recession and all a recession is, is, you know, two, four, two consecutive quarters of GDP that drops. But real estate's already had their recession. We, we've been going through it. It's been on, it's been on, on the on the volume of transactions. Hasn't been on house pricing and nothing, nothing like that. It's all been based on the volume of transactions that we've been having. And so that's where our recession has been. And so you know, if, if we have recessionary pressures helping push interest rates back down, plus what we're seeing already happen with inflation, as in, in, inflation is going to affect us much greater than that than anything on there. And so those are all moving in a very positive direction for us to be back into the fives. Uh, and, and I'm very optimistic about that. So, but I also wanted to make sure that, that you know, we're going to look at, at national data, but I also want to look at local data. And so, you know, this is from, this is, this is our, our recent chart. This is closed sales, both from, and the top one is from Georgia MLS. I'm sorry, let me get those, back those up. The top is from FMLS and the bottom is from Georgia MLS. And, see, and so you can see that, you know, in January, we were still down about, you well, know, 34% in, uh, in right at 30% in Georgia MLS on both on the, on just on the total volume of transactions that we've been down. And that's been painful for us, you know, I mean, and, and you know, this is reminiscent of what happens in October, November, even, you know, because those, you know, those contracts are what closes in January. And so we saw, you know, we, we've definitely seen a, a punch on that. Uh, and, and you can see the overall that, you know, this is where how the South kind of fares. We're right in the middle of it. Thirty-three percent is kind of like like kind of the normal on, on overall uh, just the volume of transactions. Now, if you look at pending sales, however, pending sales are trending up, and I'm very very um, optimistic about what's happening with trending sales because we're seeing a lot of activity happening right now. And and this is one of the things that kind of concerns me. It's because a lot of folks will look at, at January numbers and say man, the market's down, things are doing bad. But when you start looking at, what, at what's happening with trending sales, what's happening with activity in the market, you can talk to yourself at, you know, thinking that, or, or fool yourself into thinking that this is not really, that, that, you know, that like things aren't really heating up. We are heating up really big time right now. And so you can see that our pending sales are trending up. Even if you look at where the, where the, the line was from, la from last year heading in, into where we're going into this year, we're, you know, we're moving up in, in, a, in a positive way, which is what we need. At the same time, what, what are happening with prices? They're going down? They're leveling off is really what they are. And, and, and realistically, we need that. We need to be, like, like historically, uh, property values appreciate for right at 4.4% for the last 50 years. And so we can't keep up double digit price increase without forming a bubble. Like, like we have to get back into the range of, of reasonable, normal, uh, property appreciation. And so we really should be looking at that. And so, you know, FMLS came in at just 1%. Georgia MLS came in at, at about at about seven. Uh, and so as far as property value increased this year versus last year. Now, new listings. So new listings. Uh, and so you can see that, that you know, listings right now is, is really important to us because we need more listings. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that, that we've seen for the last year, or even for the last, if you look at the last three years, if you were representing buyers, what was the challenge? We have no property. And, and so we're still really tight. Now we're starting to trend up. Now, FMLS, total listings in FMLS are still down 7%, but you can kind of see that in Georgia MLS, what are happening with listings? We, yeah, yeah, we, we got more new listings in January this year than we had last year. And actually we're starting, we're, we're kind of bucking the trend for the entire nation on that. And so you can see that nationally, listings this year versus last year are down. However, we're starting to trend up, which is a very positive thing for us that when, when we say, look, we've got, we have interest rates that are coming down and we have inventory that's increasing. Is this gonna be really good for our buyers as well as for our sellers in there? Because it's gonna have a lot of activity going on in there. And so you can see that, you know, our total homes for sale now, our total inventory is up. And so some of those are our properties that have been sitting on the market and we're starting to see more new inventory and we're starting to see more total inventory. And so when you have inventory, plus you have lowering interest rates and we know that there's a lot of demand, uh, nearly 70, oh, I'm sorry. So there was just a recent study came out and they said that 
Of the folks who are looking to purchase a home in the last 12 months, only 30% were able to or successful. And so that means that we've got 70% of the buyers from last year that are that are pent up, ready to buy this year. And so as in, in, in last year, what was the biggest reason that stopped us? Interest rates. And so now this year moving forward, we, you know, we, we've got, we're, we're heading into a much more positive and we're going to see a real transition come you know, right around summer, because we're going to have lowering interest rates. And if y'all remember what happened last year, what was happening in the interest rates during the summer last year? So, yeah, they were going up. So we're going to we're going to cross that that apex in there coming into this summer. And all of a sudden, people are going to be like, "What's going on?" So we just want to be ready for that. And so you can see that overall, this is this is kind of what's been going on with our inventory levels, and we need that. You know, I mean, gosh, for the last couple of years, all we wanted was like. You know, I've, you know, I've got 15 offers on houses. I've got 20 offers on houses. There's so much competition. So we need to have a more balanced market. And that's what we're heading to is a more balanced sort of market. Now, anytime the market changes, everyone starts getting a little bit tense because you're always used to whatever it is. If you're in a seller's market, it feels normal. If you're in a buyer's market, it feels normal. But when it changes, that, that makes it kind of pucker up a little bit. So we just have to understand that the only, you know, the only constant we have is change. And so we have to be ready for that. And so our total change in inventory. So you can see that overall, the national average, and when you when you when when you see data, especially national data, they're going to say, you know, total inventory is down. Well, but in the Sun Belt down here in the South, we're actually up. You know, so we're actually up here in the South. We, we're starting we're starting to see rising inventory levels, which we need because we actually you know the South makes up about forty percent of all real estate transactions in the United States. So our medium days on market, our medium days on market are going up. Are they crazy? No. I mean, like, like, like in FMLS, it's 30 days on market. You know, and average days on market in, in Georgia MLS this year versus last year, we're up about three days this year over last year. So is this, uh, is 30 days on market like unbelievably unreasonable? Right. Like if you were in the like, like if you're in real estate in 2008, like, like 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 we were like, hey, we can sell this in six to nine months. It's great. So it's a very different market, right? Um, and so at the same time, what about our month supply of homes? Now, well, yeah, now Georgia must doesn't track this metric, but FMLS does. And when you look at it in here, so FMLS total total inventory here, month supply of homes, we're at 2.1 months of inventory. Now we need six months of inventory to have a balanced market where the number of buyers and the number of sellers match up. So even though we see inventory increasing, which we need, and we see interest rates coming down, we're only sitting at 2.1 months of standing inventory. Now, the news will look and say, inventory is up 90%, right? And that's because last year at this time, it was like 1.2 months of, of inventory. So yeah, we're all the way up to, to a little over two months of standing inventory. It is 90% up. And so you might say, well, gosh, that's really, really high. Okay, we're nowhere, like, like we're a third of where we need to be just to hit a balanced market. We're, we're only at two months of standing inventory. We need six months. So there's a lot of room in there still for that growth to happen. Uh, how about foreclosures? You may see foreclosures happen. Well, you kind of watch out though, because this, this is one of those where the news wants to scare the crap out of us. And I'm just being straight up about that. So this is actual, the actual chart from George MLS. And, and that red bar with this year versus last year, that looks scary, doesn't it? And then you see foreclosure filing surge 115%. You know, that's, that's, that's a big number. They want foreclosures are up 115%. All right, so if in Georgia, last year there was two foreclosures, this year, there's 10, okay? Now you put that on a scale and you think, whoa, that looks really, I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, I mean, that's significantly higher, right? I, you you got to put it into perspective here. Uh, this, I, I went and pulled up, this is, this is the HUD home store. And so this is all the HUD listings for the entire state of Georgia. Nine, there's nine houses. And, and all a HUD house is, is just an FHA mortgage that's been foreclosed on. There's nine in the entire house. I mean, house, good. In the entire state, by the way, none are in the Atlanta metro area. Not a single one. You know, some places I don't even know. Where, I'm not real sure where Hawkinsville is. Things like that. So, um, so you know, uh, is it more than there was? Yes, it is. 
So you can look at, I mean, when you look at foreclosure activity, everyone compares us to 2020 and 2021. Look at where foreclosures have been, you know, for the last 18 years, right? And so especially even look at like 2017, 2018, 2019. If you were in the business then, was foreclosure something that was driving anything in our business, in our market? No, it was really, really low. It was actually some of the lowest we'd, we'd seen. And then we had, then we had COVID and the foreclosure moratorium. And so what happened during the foreclosure moratorium? We couldn't we could foreclose on properties. We couldn't evict anybody. So should that not just be a natural thing that there's going to be more foreclosures? But, but what does the news say? Right? We got to be ready for that because, you know, if you look at the average from 2017 to 2018, that black line represents the average. And this is where we've been for the last three years. We're still short. We're still under the average of foreclosures of 275,000 of them. 2020 No, they weren't. But, if you, but our average in 2017 to 2019 was almost 600,000. We're only at 300,000. So we are in real, like, and so when, when folks, you know, we get all oral sorts of calls at the, the brokerage kind of thing with folks who are like, hey, I'm looking for foreclosures. Hey, I'm looking for off-market properties and that kind of stuff. And is that, is there, are there a lot of these out there to be had? There's more than there was, but it's nowhere near, like, like, like we're not heading into any kind of foreclosure market that's really kind of driving anything like that at all. And so the, the day is here when we have to control the narrative for this. Because if we don't, they're gonna they're gonna say foreclosures are up 115 percent, and then that affects what I mean. What does that say? To, I mean, when 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 we say our clients think that there's going to be a market crash, are they going to say okay, it's still 275 thousand dollars? Not dollars. 275 thousand foreclosures under our normal, under 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 normal times. So see, right now we are in the turn. Yeah. McDonough, I need you to share the screen. I'm not sharing screen. Oops. I am sharing screen. Looks like it's shared from only um, uh, Newman. Okay. Hold on one second. Sorry about this. All right, so we're going to go back here. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're going to jump back into here. So um, where I'm at is we are in uh, we are in the turn right now. Nobody in like like, like, like if you watch, you may watch uh, like car racing that kind of stuff. Sometimes. Yeah, but and and do you think the skill is in the turn or in the straightaways? Oh, it's, in the turns. it's going to be in the turns, right? Yeah. And 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 right now we're heading into a turn, and so you can let, you know, you you can sit back and just say, look, we're just gonna we're just gonna coast, or you can really navigate through this right now. Uh, our clients need us to be the people who are going to be helping them navigate through the turns, and and we and we we naturally do that. But right now we're in a place in the market where where we're we're in a turn. Everyone thinks the market's going to tank. Everyone thinks there's a recession. And when they think recession, they think 2008. That's not where we're at right now. We're heading into a market where, where inventory is actually increasing, where our interest rates are coming down, and where our buyer demand is looking really, really strong. Um, so this, this, is a, this is actually a data from, from, this is actually from the brokerage here. And so you can see that for the month of January, we had 67 listings out there. Now, in December, we had 65 listings. In December, we had just about 4,700 views on those, on, those, on those 67 listings. In January, 8,500 views. So, I mean, it's a really a, a drastic jump. We've seen a drastic jump on internet traffic, buyer, buyer interest. So as interest rates are coming down, more and more people are jumping into the market. We're seeing this kind of movement in. And so we're heading into this turn where it's a really good place. But if we're sitting in the same place as some of our clients and saying, well, there's a recession coming or the market's not doing great, or you know, I don't need to really be focused on engaging with my clients or I don't need to be doing this over here. Like, like right, right now, this is kind of where, we, where we're sitting is in that good buyer demand. We have, you know, and this is from the Mortgage Daily News. Right now we have good buyer demand. 
But what do you think happens if, as interest rates go down? What happens to buyer demand? It, it, it strengthens up. It really does start building up. So as we move into, we're, we're going to start moving into strong buyer demand once we get under six. Once we move into the fives, it's really going to start moving there. Once we hit five and a half, it's really going to, we're going to be on fire. And so we need to understand that. So knowing that, going into what we're going into, like, do you want to wait until the market is, really heats up and then we start reaching out to clients and start engaging with people and start, and start talking about what's happening in the market? Now's the time to do this, right? Now's the time to engage and be able to spread this message that, that you know, things are really better. Again, we know interest rates are going in the right direction right now. We're really glad to see those interest rates moving. Uh, at the same time, who's our largest population group? Millennials. And millennials are, over the next five years, the largest population group we have is all reaching first-time buyer age. Mm. So we've got lowering interest rates. We have, a, we have the largest population group in the, in the United States reaching first-time home buyer age. And then how about supply? How many houses we've been building? I guess just, I mean, we've been making babies, but we ain't, we ain't been building houses. I mean, you, you can see the, the black line. That's the average number of, of properties that, that we've been building for the past, what, 50 years kind of thing. And so we, we, we have just almost got to the point where supply meets demand. So we've got this huge population group coming in and we already don't have enough houses. Right now there's a shortage of about four and a half houses, four and a half million houses in the United States to begin with. And so I want you to have some confidence when people say, well, I think the market's going to crash. I mean, supply versus demand. We don't have enough houses. We have more people coming in the market. We have interest rates coming down to where more people can afford the market. And we don't have enough supply. So how can prices go down? Now, there's some markets in the U.S. where prices will go down, right? But that's not Georgia. Like, like here in Georgia, we're in really, really good, good position on that. We're part of that Sunbelt group. And so we, uh, you know, like if you look at undervalued, I mean, overvalued markets and things like that, that's going to be out west, up north. But here in the south, we're in really, really good shape on that. So um, I want to talk a little bit about, about using your KB Core system. And so we all have KB Core. We all use it. However, I, I, I've got so many folks that don't understand how to generate leads inside KB Core. They think it's just a database and it's not. There's things that we can do that we can actually really be engaging. And so uh, we're at, we have some classes coming up. Wordsworth over in Fayetteville is going to get a shout out here because he's going to be teaching some of these classes for us. And so we, we, have, we have a class on the books that's coming out that's going to be doing the same thing. So uh, we have a, uh, there, there's a ton of training inside KV Core. We have a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of additional training. We'll sit down with you and help, but you've got to decide that you want to do it. What I want to do is just kind of walk through with you how you can actually lead, you know, generate leads inside KB Core. Because a lot of folks are like, how do you do that? So first thing is, is you want to kind of go into your KB Core system, and then you'll see up here you have lead engine. And so inside your lead engine up here, then, then there's several things that you can do. And so in here, one of the things that you can do is you can you can generate landing pages. And so these are static landing pages, but you can do all sorts of things in here. You know, I, I can I can give out a list of you know five things to look for when when buying a home and going through a divorce and things like that. There's all kinds of stuff that we can use a landing page for that's a very static landing page. Um, in addition to that, part of the I, that I find the most value, especially if you're going to be incorporating these into social media, is going to be using the IDX squeeze page. And all IDX, you know, that, that's just how we how we share our listings up. And so, so we have we have permission to sit, to share listings through our MLS agreements. And so we can come in and we can create a multi-property landing page. So, like, how how useful would it be for you know homes in uh, I'm over here in Conyers. So homes in homes in Newton County um, uh, under two hundred thousand dollars, under two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that'd be nice to and then post that link in a list out on the Facebook mm -hmm. or new construction in in Clayton County or uh, homes by the lake. And so we could go in and do any of these multi-page or multi-property type of property uh, listings that we want. And then we can share those out, whether we're sharing it on Facebook, Instagram, any of that kind of stuff. We can even send it out to, to folks inside our database looking at stuff like that. We can also do that on, on individual single 
uh, properties. So we can take just a single property and we can blast that out and we'll share those links. We can do what's called a seller squeeze. And all that really is, is, is a, how much is my home's worth with, you know, landing page. And we can also send out market reports to all those sellers, those folks that were interested, what's really happening in the market, that kind of stuff, you know, talks about days on market, those kind of things. So we can build all of those that are built in as well. Uh, also in there, we have text codes. And these work really, really good in, text, in Facebook because you can go in, you can make text, co text codes for anything. Text Allen to this number and then automatically it's sent back this property. To see this detail, to see, you know, to have this sent, it text, you know, all you just put, put in, you can put in any text code that you want. You can make up your own so long as it's not already taken kind of thing. So you go in, you put in your text code and you have it go to this page or to this link or to this. I could even do that with, with our previous landing page. So, you know, I can say, text, you know, you know, new construction to this number, and, and it's going to send them a list of all those new construction properties. Now, the beauty here is that when they open that, when they click on that, what do they have to do? They, they put in their information, and then where does where's that information go? Exactly. Into your KV core, right, exactly. So text codes can work really, really good out on social on there. In addition, you know, we have all, you know, like all the listings are, are, are in here. So on one hand, you can actually come up here and search both MLSs at the same time. You can come here, you can search for properties inside the MLS. And then, but, you know, you can also just pull up, so like, like this is, this is Amy's, one of Amy's property, you know, Amy Curlin, this is her listing over on Oak Street kind of thing. And so, you know, uh, all the listings are in there. But in addition to that, we can come in here, there's this little button up here, which says more action. So I could come in here and I could send that out to any of my clients via text. I could email, you know, so if you have folks in your database and, and you put different hashtags in there. So if I have folks who, who are looking for new construction or first time buyers or any of that kind of stuff, I could email it to any of those folks from the hashtag or text it to them. I could print flyers if I wanted to. But one of the biggies I can do is I can post it to Facebook out here directly from here. And, and now you're posting it to your Facebook, but it's going to send them this property, but when somebody signs up, where they go? And do your KV core. And you can also do it to Twitter, Pinterest. I'm not a big fan of Craigslist, but you can do it in there as well. Um, in addition to that, we have this thing called CMA Builder. And so you go into marketing, you hit the button that says CMA Builder. Now, I want to be clear that this is a marketing tool, not a true CMA. Meaning it does pull a CMA, but it's, it's no different than a Zestimate, or anything like that. And we all know how accurate those are. So, th so this can this is going to be there for marketing purposes. So, but you, all you really do is go in, put in a name, put in an address, and hit the button. All right. Now, if you want to go in more depth, you can go into core present and do a lot more. But that I'm just trying to touch on the basics here. When I go in there, I hit build CMA, I get you know this one page which just has you know the whole idea, all the stuff in there, prepare for them. Gives a brief listing of, of, of all the active properties, where they're at, and comes up with, with a basic value. That takes 22 seconds to do. And now I'm sending a custom CMA to those individual properties because do we want more listings? Yes or yes, right? We absolutely want to have more listings. And so we can, we can use those to help generate sellers through there. And then we actually we have some agents right now that are buying leads directly through their KV core. And the cool part about buying leads inside the system is, is if you if, like if you wanted to buy a Facebook leads or, or seller leads or oh, boosting properties, you can do Google pay per click in here. You just pick what, what keywords you want to do. Um, and so I, I'm not saying that you have to go do that. But if you're doing it, the benefit of doing it through here, one is, is I find that their, their rates are, are, are better than some, some of the other companies that do it for you. But then it automatically goes where? It's in your database, right? And so it's working. And so that helps you work your database right there. So I'm not trying to push anybody into this. I'm just saying, know that this is there. That this is something that you are looking at doing. But in order, yeah, go ahead. So I had just got a listing uh -huh. live last week and I did the property boom. So I had $60 for the week. Uh -huh. And so far I've gotten like eight leads. Eight leads. Uh, uh, so that was well. So, so, so that's more than a lead a day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, uh, I, I think that's great. And, and so, yeah. and, you know, if you can get that to pay for itself, I mean, yeah. that that sixty dollars investment is really going to you know bank a lot for you on there. Because, excellent, good job. Um, in order, Alan, to know, oh, I'm sorry. 
Alan, um, we didn't hear exactly uh, where she got the eight leads from. It'd be great if you could uh, oh, oh, expand. I apologize. Yep. So she she uh, she had a listing and she did property boost on that property, and so she's averaging she's averaging a, a lead a day on that uh, on that property boost. All right. So back to this. We're gonna we're gonna. So in order to do this though, in order to really be effective, we have to have leads in our in, in our database in our KV Core system, and that's really what, like like one of the big things here, because I don't care what your lead systems are. Like like it doesn't matter if you know. If, if you're going to be working referral or if you're going to work first time buyers or you're trying to generate expired listings or for sale by owners or nine month rentals or it just doesn't matter. All those lead systems, you gather leads and then you put them in your database and then you use your database to be able to build engagement. Right. So, you know, th that's the whole idea is it has to go into some way so that you I mean, no, no, not no one, but. Most people need to get to know you. It's, it's a relationship business. And we and this is the technology that can help us build relationships. And so you need to come in and you need to have contacts in your database. It's so important that, that you have your that you have your contacts in there. And so now if you don't have your contacts, all you have to do is go up here under playbooks. And so the playbooks is up in the top left hand corner. And then that button that says gather your sphere. It open playbook. And when you do, it's going to say import your sphere. And so if you have a database, if you have a list of people, you can either just email it to them and they'll do it for you, or you can do it yourself and upload it yourself. Now, I'm all about somebody doing it for me. Uh, but, you know, uh, now if you don't have a list, then you can go in and put them in one at a time and, and, and add your people in. So it's really, really, this is this is super easy to get folks into the database, right? And then once they're in, the probably, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do is make sure that everybody in your database has a property alert set up. Because, you know, and, and I think drips are fine, but realistically, like, if I send you out something that says, hey, I'm an amazing realtor, use me. This is another thing that I do incredible. Here's another reason you should use me. Here's another reason people are going to be like, yeah. But if I send you pretty houses that you're interested in looking at, what happens then? They get interested. Well, and the other thing that, that we find is, is when you send two property alerts a week, and that's really what we do recommend, like people are busy, but they like to see properties. And so all of a sudden, you see that folks are starting to open up property alerts. They're starting to look at properties. Who's interested in buying now? They are. And so now I'm not having to focus all my efforts on everybody, because at any time, only 3% of our market is actively engaged in buying and selling real estate. And so we can use those property alerts. So <laughs> excuse me, getting those folks into our database, getting and having property alerts set up is so crucial because now we're continuing to do marketing. We're continuing to bring things in. We're using our KV core. So we're adding more people in, but then once they're in there, we want to be able to engage with them and form relationships and they want to see pretty houses, right? Understand that they will go to Zillow and look, or they'll go to your website if you send it to them and they'll open up the emails if you send it to them. But if you don't send it to them and you don't send them to your website, they're going to Zillow. And so and they're on Zillow, they're going to they're going to try and make other agents pay to, 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 to work with them. So you have the power in your hands already to do this. So the benefit here is that once once you have leads coming in and you have folks inside your database, when you come in and you log in and you scroll down to the top of the dashboard, it shows you all the activity that's going on. Who looked at a property? Who what? Who sent an email? Who viewed a listing? Who sent a text? What text needs to be coming out? What do I need to do? It's all right there for you. And so and I'm not having to go worry about, you know, if I've got 100 people and they're all, and they've all got property alerts set up, do I have to worry about going in and looking at each and every one? No, I just have to go check the dashboard. And if somebody's opening property, what do I do? Hey, I saw you're looking at some houses. You ready to go this weekend? That kind of thing. And so, you know, it really does help us to get that way. In addition, we can go inside here. Once you have folks inside your database, this doesn't do any good if you don't have folks inside your database. Well, in there, you can go in, you can turn on birthdays and anniversaries. So that they're getting all, and as long as you have the dates in there and that kind of stuff, then, then it'll, it'll automatically do those. You can also set up search alerts based on different criteria. So this is similar to property alerts, but these are search alerts based on just reduced, um, just you know, di different, different characteristics. You can attach it to different hashtags, things like that. So you can set up different property alerts.
for different groups of clients, and you're not having to do it individually, but it's just like an additional blast that you can send out. And then also in there, uh, if you want to, you can also, once you have folks in there, you can say, if my lead does this, do this. So if, if, if I notice that, that they start opening property alerts, I, send them a text message. I love that. Send them an email. And, and, but you know, you, if you don't have anybody in there, there's nobody to send it to, okay, is what I'm saying. <laughs> So like this thing is going to work for you, but you have to make sure that, that you're doing your part yes. first in here. And so we're going to have a little contest from this month to next month. And so for every hundred contacts that you add between now and then, we're going to throw your name in the hat and then we're going to draw it at next month's sales meeting. And then we're going to pull one of those out of the hat. And then whoever wins, wins. So, well, but uh, like, but I mean, realistically, like, like who, who benefits if you put 100 contacts into your, into your database? Yeah. You do. If you put 100 contacts and, and you start engaging with them and you start sending them up property alerts, who's going to win big time in this? You're, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I might be throwing 300 bucks at, 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 you know, at, at, into the pot, but realistically, like if, if you, I mean, for every, time, every 100 clients that you go out and do this for, this is going to benefit you. And it's going to benefit you longer than the next 30 days. And, and, and the reason I wanted to talk about this now is because back to that whole turn thing, the market's turning. Now's the time to build that engagement up. Now's the time to take the time and invest in your business. Because, you know, you are small business people and you have to decide, how am I going to engage? How am I going to build my, my sphere? I'm, I'm giving you some, I mean, we went through all the ways that you can do lead generation through here. I went through all, you know, how we can engage once we have them in there. Mm -hmm. And so this is, and, and we have, there's a ton of training. I don't want, first of all, you can't break this thing. Okay. So there's no problem. We can fix anything else in there, but we just got to kind of get in and play with it. And, and the, when should we do that? Because I'm already sure uh, there's so, a lot of times it's like, yeah, I'm going to get to that soon. I've already started. Uh, good, good. But, but uh, like soon, soon is wrong. Like, like we need, like, like you, you need to say, like, like, and we're going to help you. We'll, we'll do anything we can to help you grow your business here. But you've got to, you have to take the first step. I'm not going to drag you like a boat anchor. Go Conyers. So. Go Conyers. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right, Nancy. Send me down now. All right. I want to, I want to jump. I want to change gears really quickly, especially for listing agents. And if you're going to be a listing agent, there's a new thing in George MLS and it's floor plans. And it's really super easy and it doesn't cost anything. And I'm going to really encourage you to take advantage of this technology. So if you go into George MLS, you'll see up there under all the quick access, there's this button that says floor plan mm -hmm. in there. And it is it is a free floor plan builder. builder. And it's called Kubikasi. Kub I, I, honestly, I can't say the name at all. Um, but Kubikasa, I believe, is what we're going to go with. And so uh, in there is this, is, is this software is built up into there. And you go in and, and you, you know, there's a, there's a basic sign up in there and then you're going to download the app. Mm -hmm. And once you have the app downloaded, all you do is you open up the app and then you go and you basically take a picture of the floor of the entire house. It takes about five minutes. All you do is just kind of, you go in and, and when you go into a different room, you hit a button and you say bedroom. And then you just kind of walk through and it kind of scans the whole room. Oh wow! And then you walk out and you say, hallway and then you do that and then you go all the way through and all and, and seriously it's just, it, it takes longer than you think just because like we don't normally walk from one point around yeah. every single space in the entire house yeah. but you know that's all you're really doing is you're walking through with your phone and then you hit save and it uploads to their site and then normally in a like you know, they say within 24 hours the last one we did we got in about 12 hours and it looks like that oh and so all I did was walk around with my phone and take a picture of our house and just kind of walked all the way around and it gave me the entire floor plan back. In addition, if you want it, it'll even give you dimensions of the rooms and it'll leave you square footage and that kind of stuff. Now they're going to say that they have upgrades so you can get it faster and you can get you know, square footage is, you can get, you, you, there's several things that you can do that you want to pay for, but the basic version is free. And so what you're looking at, that's free 99. And so 
when when we talk about what 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 do buyers want to see more of, they want they want to see floor plans. And so, if you want your listings to sh to stand out to shine, here we've got a free service that will that will generate this for you. And we're even taking those. And by the way, once you download that, could you also upload that to FMLS? Absolutely. Because so it's not necessarily linked. To, I mean, it's linked to Georgia MLS, but like the, it, it's a it's going to be a floor plan, and it's going to show just the basic outline. And really, that's what buyers want to see is that basic outline of how does this house lay out. And by the way, my son's room was an absolute nightmare, and it still took all that, with even with all the clothes on the floor and the whole nine yards like that. So uh, it really does a pretty good job, uh, or a really good job. And it didn't, like I said, I love the price, but I also love the technology and that we're going, and it's a way for, for listing agents to go above and beyond with their listings. Please <clears throat> jump on this technology. It doesn't cost anything. And so go ahead and like, let's get good with this. Kubakasi. C U B I C A S A. And so it is it, like, like when you go into Georgia MLS, it's right there where, where it says floor plans, right here in the middle. Yep. Yeah. That's where it's at. And so just download the app and rock with it. All right, there we go. All right. Now, one other thing that we're going to be that we're starting up is we're going to be doing listing displays. A lot of our offices are in retail locations, and we're not, and, and we don't always do a great job of taking advantage of the fact that we have retail locations. So we're going to be putting displays facing out to the windows as well as in the office, which is going to be rotating and sharing our listings. In addition to that, uh, we're also going to be doing agent bios in between the properties. So, like. You can do your glamour shots from the 80s or maybe a more recent picture kind of thing. And then the, the, it, it needs to be less is more like, like, like because folks are walking by. So uh, we're, we're creating bio templates that we can run in between there. If you'd like to have that, I need you to, I'm going to need you to, to all the, you know, we're putting all that together right now. I'm going to need you to reach out to your branch manager uh, about getting those in. Cause I, I'd love to be able to showcase you in the marketplace and, and, and everyone that wants to kind of get into that. But we got to get that right. The other thing we got to make sure is we got to make sure all of our our photos and our and our, and our, our uh, everything updated in KB Core as well. Because when we do these listing displays, whatever image, whatever picture you have in in KB Core, guess what's going up on the TV? <laughs> that picture. So there you go, Jan. Jan, you know, there, there, there's Jan's right there. And now the the cool thing here is is on uh, when we when we once we get these TVs up and all these kind of things start sharing these out they all have QR codes and if I scan any of those QR codes that's going to open up the listing agents KB Core site and and so folks can can we want to be able to take advantage of the retail sites that we have and being able to share those out and so we'll rotate those out as well as agent bios on all, all of our locations questions no okay. Well, then uh, I want to just say congratulations to our top producers here. So, you know, Shoney, Shoney's the, the big dog for the entire company out there. And then for each of our offices, uh, we also have Platinum Han. And so they're, they're uh, you know, that, that's all the top folks for all the top offices. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out today. Thank you very much. We're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to stop kind of the corporate sort of, sort of things. And we're just going to go to the local uh, sales meeting just in the office right now. So. Uh, I, uh, it, by the way, if anybody wants these slides, uh, I'll email them to all the branch managers. So, at, you know, as soon as the meeting's over, uh, uh, I'll, I'll email them to the branch managers. If you guys want to be able to take those, so, you know, take them, cut them apart, use them, share them out on social media, anything you can that can, that'll help you grow your business. We're, we're glad to do it. So thank you guys very much. I love y'all and appreciate y'all.